has two colors over it. Uh-huh. And one color means terrible things happen, and the other color means terrible things happen, but more slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a science teacher. I'm Cheryl, and I slept through science. Each episode, we'll tackle a science question you may have learned in school, but can't quite remember or fully explain. And I'll take the risk of asking the dumb questions so that we can all understand the science we slept through. The bell has rung. Let's get started. Welcome to lesson 72. We are in our invisible things unit. Cheryl, are you enjoying talking about things that we can't see? Yes, it's so interesting. I mean, it also is funny, though, because some of our units, when um, my like hardest thing has been the invisible aspects of what we're talking about. And now we're just Mm -hmm. doing a unit on things (laughs) invisible. But it's really fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. Good, good. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. What invisible thing would you like to talk about today? Okay, well, I was going to say that this is the classic example of an invisible thing, but I'm pretty sure I said the same thing about gravity. Um, (laughs) So now, now I'm not sure what to say, but I will say um, this is a classic example of an invisible thing when it comes to people say like, we know it's there because we see the effects of it, even though we don't see it directly. And that is the wind. The wind. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the wind. What actually makes the wind blow? Oh, okay. So what makes it actually blow? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's move into our pre-assessment and see what you already know or think or can reason your way through. Let's start actually even simpler. What do you think the wind is? Oh, no. Um, The wind (laughs) is the movement of air from one place to another. Ooh. I added okay. more words to make it sound like I knew more than I did. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. I noticed that, yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's the movement of air from one place to another. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think causes the wind to move from one place to another then? Okay. So I feel like I heard years ago that we have wind because the earth is spinning. Okay. And so, so you think it's related to the earth spinning? <laughs> Yes, but then when I think about it more, it feels like, well, then in that case, shouldn't we get the same amount of wind all the time? And I could understand how, like, if you live near a mountain range, that maybe either the mountains are protecting you against the wind or the wind is hitting you hard and then hitting against the mountains and stopping. So, like, I could see that. So, okay, got that as far as like peaks and valleys go in elevation but then why isn't it that every single day at one point it's not just getting the same wind and yeah i know weather but like and we we've said this before we just need to talk about weather more because it's pretty confusing too but like i know that wind would come more from weather but why then like the earth is still spinning at the same rate. So why wouldn't wind just be wind all the time? Okay. All right. A couple of things to kind of dive into deeper in what you said. So first of all, when you said the wind comes from weather, what do you mean by that? I don't really know, but I know that okay. that's a part of like, if you have a something front coming in or whatever okay. is happening, wind is an element of that. Okay. But is wind what's causing those weather changes or does wind accompany those weather changes? Mm. And if you had to guess which of those it is, which would you guess? Isn't it like a chicken and the egg thing where it's like, <laughs> yes, yes, wind does cause it. And yes, wind also is a product. Like, is, is it, it okay. makes it happen and it's a result? Like the fact that like a front or I just use that word because you hear it and like weather mm-hmm. forecast things. But like if, if weather is coming in, is it coming in and moving in the first place because the wind is blowing it to a new area? Yeah, I think so. So 
but then there's also like wind like with a storm and i don't okay. think there's wind with a storm only because wind blew the storm there i think wind is like a result or like a product it's like something mm. a part of it okay and then there's hurricanes what <laughs> That, that may need to be another lesson, Cheryl, because I feel like you got all sorts of questions brewing about those hurricanes. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next thing that I want to ask about, you said you've heard that it's because the earth is spinning. Yeah. If, but you, you seem to be unconvinced that that's the case because it doesn't quite add up so that maybe there's something yeah. you're missing or maybe it's not true or something. But if we set aside the spinning part for a minute, if you had to think of something else besides the spinning of the earth that might be causing wind, what other things do you think might be involved? Okay, I have two guesses. I would say temperature and pressure. Okay, tell me about each of those. Okay, so, I mean, we've talked a lot about temperature in different lessons mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this podcast, and... um it's clear that temperature just has a huge influence on a lot of things and like okay. on molecules, on all sorts, on water, on all sorts <laughs> of things okay. as an influence. And so I would guess that it has to do something with like, if there's hot air here and there's cold air over there, mm -hmm. that something's going to happen with a movement between the two. And as we all know, wind is the movement of air from one place to another. So, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> and then with okay. pressure, I don't really know what I mean exactly by it, but like we talked about like okay. the vacuum of space or different things like that. Just like mm -hmm. if there's different mm -hmm. pressure things happening that it's going to try to even out. And again, that process probably creates a lot of weather and a lot of wind that goes along with that. Okay. And any ideas why it would create wind and weather? Why the pressure would specifically? Because of um, a word that I don't remember, uh, <laughs> where something um, highly concentrated wants to move to an area where it's less concentrated. And so I think that's why it would want to move. I don't know why there'd be pressure other than like elevation changes. But I think pressure is a big part of weather, it seems like. But I don't I don't really know why or how that actually happens. So many more questions are going to be coming out of this that I'm sure <laughs> will not all be answered today. <laughs> that, and that's okay. I think that's a fairly standard thing. And that's kind of what keeps science going. So keep them coming. In order to answer your question, we're going to start with your definition. What is wind? And I actually really like your definition, the movement of <laughs> air from one place to another. Sorry, I forgot the important yeah. uh, second yeah, part yeah. there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more scientific I mean, I think that's that a, way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, way more scientific. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I do think it's a good definition, though. I think it's a good explanation of what wind is at a very foundational level, because when you don't have wind – overall, the air is not moving. And when you feel wind, that's because the air is actually moving. The molecules themselves are moving. So I think that's a great place to start. As far as the earth spinning, we're going to come back to that at the end, if that's okay. We're going to start a okay. little bit simpler because okay. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but spinning things are actually pretty complicated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just in general, when things are spinning, it tends to get more complicated to understand. So we're going to set that aside for a moment. Okay. But let's talk about temperature and pressure because you talked about both of those things. And really at the foundation, if you were to ask me to say just one thing that causes wind, I would say differences in temperature. Mm, okay. Okay. Or if I were going, if I was going to talk and be more sciencey, it would be the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. Mm, okay. What do you think I mean by that? Well, different parts of the Earth have very different temperatures or amounts they're heated to. I guess if 
Mm -hmm. We're using your terminology there. (laughs) And so different regions, because of those heat differences, there will just continue to be wind because there will continue to be movement because because of that temperature difference yep. essentially yep and on a really big global scale where are the regions that tend to be heated the most by the sun the equator yes the near middle. the equator the yep. middle section and then where would be the parts that are being heated the least by the sun the poles the poles exactly and so oh very good i like what you did with your fingers there right so you've got like the top and the bottom of the earth for lack of a better term right yeah. at the poles you've got the least amount of direct sunlight so you've got the least heating and then at the equator and or near it you've got the most direct sunlight so you've got the most heating which means in general your hot air is around the middle and your cold air is around the top and the bottom And as we've talked about multiple times before, definitely in our hot and cold unit, but it's come up before, and I think you even referenced it a little bit, the movement of molecules is a big deal. And the hotter a substance is, what can you tell me about their molecules? They're faster. They're faster. And the colder it is? They're slower. The slower the molecules are. And as a general rule, and you referenced this already as well, things want to even out. No, they even out, but what what's the word that I can't remember? Equalize? Equilibrium? No, you taught me a word. Oh, oh, um, are you talking about diffusion? Yeah. Yep, 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 yeah. yep. That's yep. the word I couldn't think of. Yeah, where things go from higher concentration to lower concentration. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is technically a little bit different because we're talking about temperature, but it's a very similar process. Yes. So going from higher concentration to lower concentration. So the higher concentration of high temperature, like the higher kinetic energy, it's going to even out across where there's less of it. So in general, the air is going to move from the equator to the poles, both ends. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now... We don't just have wind going from the equator up to the North Pole and down to the South Pole. It's obviously more complicated than that, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the other thing you talked about was pressure, and the pressure is actually related to the temperature. Think about at the equator. If we think about the sun, let's say it's pointing directly down on the equator, and it's heating up the surface of the Earth, and that's heating up the air near the surface of the Earth. And when things heat up, the molecules are moving faster, which also means they spread out more. And when they spread out more, they're less dense. Remember when we talked about balloons? For Thanksgiving? For Thanksgiving, we talked about the Thanksgiving Day Parade balloons. Do you remember that? Yeah, we talked about helium. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We did. And things that are less dense, that aren't as packed together in general, don't weigh as much. And so, and it's much more complicated, I'm oversimplifying, but when you have hot air that is less dense, it can rise above cold air that is more dense. And so what you have is air from the surface that's getting heated by the sun, and it starts to actually float up in the atmosphere. Not like all the way out to space or anything, but it starts to float upwards. And what that does is as the air is moving away from the surface, that means there's less of it pushing down on you, which means you don't have as much pressure. You have a low pressure system. Oh. So in places like Death Valley or like places where it's really low elevation, is that like a common thing in those areas that there's like a low pressure system then? Uh. There's two things going on here. So you mentioned low elevation. Why mm-hmm. did you pick low elevation? Because it's lower. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it just about low elevation heat? Is lower. It's not really just about, it's not not really to do with the elevation. So much is really to do is, with the heat. Elevation is another factor. If you are lower down, you actually have more air above you. Which I think we've talked about this oh, before too. Oh, yes, yes. So you would actually have a higher 
pressure if you had the exact same temperature, if you were at a lower elevation than if you are at a higher elevation. So if you're at a high area and it's hot, then, then like that could the be most even lower pressure. Low yeah. pressure. Potentially. Yeah. Again, it's more complicated, but yes, that it's a general pattern that would make sense. Interesting. So then the opposite is true when you have area that's really, really cold, because if it's cold, the molecules are moving less. So they're closer together. It's more dense. When you have air that's more dense, it tends to sink below area air that is less dense. And so that air is moving down closer to the surface, which would be mm. a higher pressure. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because there's more yeah. of it kind of pushing down on you. Okay. And so then you've got those different pressures. And in addition to the temperatures wanting to spread out, you also have pressures that want to spread out hmm. and even and have even air pressure. And so when you've got a high pressure system right next to a low pressure system, which one do you think is going to win? Win? Wow. It's a battle now. Okay. Well, so if they're pushing think... against each other. If they're like right pressure. next to each other, high pressure is going to push into that yeah. low pressure. Now yeah. you've got air pushing against other air. Mm. Voila, you have wind. Cool. Okay. So, so is that sort of make sense? just like when you throw a bunch of it all together? I know we're not really <laughs> getting into hurricanes, but it is made of wind. It Well, hurricanes have wind. I don't know if they're made of wind, but a oh. wind is a, a major component of a hurricane. Okay. So this can actually take us back to the earth spinning. Okay. So because the earth, so all this stuff is happening. Things are moving generally from the equator towards the poles in general. That's the general pattern. But the earth is also spinning and things move funny when they move on something that's spinning. And we can talk a whole lot more about exactly how, there, but there's this thing called the Coriolis effect. You may have heard of it before, you may not have. Um, and if you want to know more about it, we can do a whole separate lesson on it. But basically it means that because the earth is spinning, when things are trying to move straight, they actually get deflected and they move mm. at an angle instead from our perspective. And you talked about hurricanes. That is, again, big picture, oversimplified, why hurricanes spin around in a particular direction why they they're circular around is because uh, of the spinning of the earth it's like a top on a top yes it took me a minute to figure out what you meant the <laughs> earth was one of the tops and then the hurricane is the other <laughs> top on top of the top got it yeah. i'm tracking with you <laughs> so what causes the wind in general is the uneven heating of the earth, right? Those differences mm -hmm. in temperature. And that causes the air to start doing other things. But then that leads to differences in pressure. And then the earth spinning can cause it to actually get deflected in different directions. And that's what causes basically all of the weather on earth, which you kind of referenced earlier. But that's sort of the big picture overview of where wind comes from. That's so cool. So let's say the whole earth was heated the same okay. and the whole earth had the same pressure, but it okay. still spun. Would we still uh -huh. have some wind, but just not the type of wind that we see? So the earth is still a sphere? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But magically, we're able to yes. have the temperature magically. be exactly the same and mm -hmm. the pressure be exactly the same. Yep. Would there still be wind? I don't actually know the answer. I'm going to have to make a guess. Okay. What's your guess? What I would guess is effectively, no, there wouldn't be wind. There would still be air movement, but I don't think there would be wind in the way that you're thinking about it. And the reason that I think that is because the air already is moving with the earth in its spinning. Mm, because we right? have like, an atmosphere. Because we have an atmosphere and because the whole earth is spinning and the air in general is moving more or less in line with that spinning. If not, then we would feel huge amounts of wind because the earth is actually spinning at several thousand miles per hour. And we don't feel yeah. seven, 
feel that speed of air movement. Yeah. So most of the movement is not going to be because of the spinning of the earth, I don't believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other reason is because I'm looking for a book and I don't think I have it. I think it's in my classroom at school. Are you familiar with the book, What If? by the XKCD? Oh, hey, that that's the one. Yes. <laughs> you and um, just our, our guest from last week, Ian, the two uh-huh. of you told me to buy this book for my awesome stepson, Jack, who has a lot of really good science oh, questions. Oh, yes. That's and right. I ordered it in that moment, came the next day, and I've been reading him. He chooses which questions he wants to hear, and then I read it, and we look at the funny pictures together. Uh-huh. And it's so interesting. Oh, my gosh. Isn't it so good? Yeah. And you know he has a second Very one cool. now? What if two? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, at some point I'm going I'm to have to get that for Jack too, because this yeah. book is so good. It is. Yeah. It's really good. Well, so anyway, there's, and I don't remember what they're called because the names of them don't always match what I would expect to look for, but I think it's something about what if the earth were to just suddenly stop spinning. And I think it's near the beginning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The question is, what would happen if the Earth and all terrestrial objects suddenly stopped spinning, but the atmosphere retained its velocity? Yes. The and first sentence of his answer is nearly everyone would die. <laughs> and this is why the book is so good. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. So for in case anyone is unfamiliar, we'll put a link to the book and his website um, in our show notes in the description. Um, but he is, uh, I think he was a, was he a mechanical engineer. I don't remember, um, but mathematician, something like that. And so he takes these bizarre questions and actually does the real calculations to figure out what would actually happen in these really bizarre scenarios that would never actually happen in real life. It's super entertaining. He's also a web comic artist, so he illustrates in in the book as well. And there's like little stick figures mostly or like embellished stick figures. Um it's great. It's I highly recommend it. It's a super fun book. Um what? Oh, I'm just reading ahead now and one of his little illustrations uh, answering this question is a map of the earth and it has two colors over it. Uh And one color means terrible things happen. And the other color means terrible things happen, but more slowly. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. Anyway, the, the crux of the answer, I know it's spoilers here, but is if the earth were to just stop spinning, the air would continue to move at the rate that it is moving and it would move so fast. That's why it would kill everybody because it's already moving super, super fast. So based on that information to come back to your question originally, I, I think that if there was no uneven heating, the air would be moving in sync with the earth for the most part. And therefore there would be very little wind. That's my guess, but I don't know that for sure. I am, not an expert on that. I could be completely wrong, but that's my best guess. So is that like when someone gets in a car accident, the reason they fly out of their car is because their body is still moving at the speed that the car is moving. And then the car stops, their body just keeps moving that same. Yes. It's called inertia, which I'm sure you've heard of before. Yes, I sure have. Yeah. And now Cheryl, why don't we blow on into our quiz? Um, I prefer to blow it off, but thank you for the option. Oh, good one! That was that was well done, actually. That was well done. <laughs> First question: You're gonna you're gonna get this one. If you don't, then I'm very concerned. What is wind? The movement of air from one place to another. Oh, very nice, very yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Second question: What is the root cause of wind on Earth? Temperature is the biggest one. Mm-hmm. And that's because molecules that are heated more are moving at a different rate than molecules that are colder. And so then they want to spread out all nice and evenly 
She's very considerate of them. It um, is, isn't it? Yes. And that it makes air move, which we've established is what wind is. Yeah. In conclusion. And sorry, the teacher in me <laughs> can't can't let can't let this go. When you you said that that they're they're different. What about them is different? They're the amount they're moving. Uh -huh. Which one's doing which? Oh, okay. I see. The hot ones are moving more and the cold ones are moving less. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Yep. And I, I know you know that, but those are, those are just, that's, that's the, there's certain things in it's me that right. I can't turn off and, and yep. that's one of them as a teacher. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Where on earth can you go to find those temperature differences and why? Oh my gosh. Now we're a travel podcast again and I'm so excited. <laughs> um, we can go everywhere. Um, <laughs> closer to the equator in general is going to be warmer and further away, closer to the poles is going to be colder. So in the, the center part of the earth is heated a lot more than the yes. edges, poles, yes. whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, I, I mentioned it in passing, so it's okay if you don't know this, but why does the equator generally warmer than the poles? Because isn't it just because it faces the sun more, like more directly? Yeah. Yep. It gets more direct sunlight. Yep. Okay. You got it. Nice. What does the spinning earth do to the global winds? Um, things get launched in weird directions because up straight up isn't really straight up if the earth is constantly spinning so then they get a little wonky and get those wonky winds get launched at some weird projectile or something like that so at some weird projectile um yeah it's angle we don't angle yeah. do you yeah. know what a projectile is i just think about vomiting when I think about a projectile. Projectile vomit, sure, yeah. yeah. A, a projectile is a thing that you have projected through space. It's the thing oh. that's going through space. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> bonus lesson, there you go. So fun. <laughs> yeah, last question. Would you say that the wind causes or accompanies weather? Ooh, I would say it causes it. How come? Um, it seems like kind of the first step in how weather begins is that there's movement in the air and then mm -hmm. it takes off from there and becomes all sorts of magical things that might as well be magic as far as how much I understand them. Um, <laughs> but it seems like it that's caused by wind in the first place. Yeah, I think so. Although I think your, your answer before we had really dived into the lesson could also, you could justify that one too, is yes, because it's both. It definitely causes and it also accompanies. But yes, I think, I, I like the, the thought that it it causes because ultimately, mm -hmm. again, at a root or a base level, that really is what is driving all of the weather on the entire planet is mm. that the movement of air, which you have already defined for us as wind. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and with that final thought, that's all the time we have for today's lesson. Please go ahead and pack up your stuff and get ready for my closing remarks. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Slept Through Science or on Twitter at Slept Science. If you have dumb science questions like I do, please send them to us. You can email us at isleptthroughscience at gmail.com, or you can even send us a voice memo and we'll play it on the podcast. Please rate and review our podcast to tell other people what you think about it. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode and share about our podcast on social media. Thank you to Beth Reed Miller for the artwork. You can check out more of Beth's artwork at Beth is something. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Ah! The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you.